Hi, this is Charity and welcome to a new monthly challenge. These challenges are put out by Amanda Play Sims and her channel will be tagged below. So we have Eddie from the last scenario where we had to basically get grandma to give us her inheritance. We actually added her to the household and I didn't notice, but at the end of that scenario, it actually gave us Ambrosia. So we will be resurrecting Nyssa so that she can live out the rest of her life and at least have some days left with the family. But when she passes on next time, we will just leave her gone. So what we have now is Eddie has taken on a new scenario, the extraterrestrial researcher scenario. And if you're wondering how I'm playing this with a household, especially one that doesn't have just one sim in it, is that I had to separate Eddie out into his own household first, start the scenario in this save and use his household and then add everyone back into the household. So that's a little cheaty, but that's what I did. So the story is Ava has actually become family oriented. She's no longer mean. I took away that trait and she's now family oriented. So she has taken her generous inheritance that she got with Nyssa and she is also helping to support all of her siblings. So we have all of her siblings here in the house and we also have their partners. So Eddie is the oldest and his partner is Liberty Lee. And I thought this was so perfect. Liberty Lee is actually an astronaut. I don't think that's her original career. It might be, but it might not. She's level two. So maybe it is her original career, but she's an astronaut. So Eddie has been obsessing over extraterrestrials and he's also a computer whiz and a computer geek so he's kind of a nerd well he's at least a geek and he's jealous goofball and lazy i think i'm going to change lazy i can remove it with ui cheats okay eddie is no longer lazy he is however a goofball family oriented geek and jealous so hopefully now he will no longer leave piles of clothes everywhere and he's going to become a hardworking Sim. So he's going to support his family. And he's also going to have to build this rocket back here. Yeah, so there wasn't really that much room. But I did manage to fit the rocket back here. Which is a good thing because Liberty Lee is an astronaut. So we actually need a spaceship for her too. And I redid the house a little bit. So the downstairs is mostly the same. We're going to have Gregory, the kid, in this room with the little bear. And then we have this Murphy bed that we're actually going to not use for anybody who's currently staying in the house. We won't have any stayover guests either because you don't get stayover guests when you have a full household. For some reason, the game will not allow you to have more than eight Sims in a house. And then we have the upstairs that I completely re redid. And yes, we still have all of the babies. I thought that would make this a little bit more interesting because I really wanted to redo this upstairs while we were playing the other scenario. But unfortunately, we didn't get enough time. So I did it this time and we have Eddie in this room and they get a double bed and they have two babies. And then poor Ava. <laughs> Ava and Jules Rico have this room and they have four babies. Now, I didn't realize when I was playing the other scenario that Jules Rico, yeah, I suspected Jules is involved with Bess. They have a romance relationship, but if you ask Jules if he's single, he says he's single. He doesn't say he's seeing someone he, and they're not married. I don't know why they're just lovebirds and they don't have any kids. So Ava's just going to continue with the jewels and jewels is hers now. So sorry, Bess. Then we have Lila and Alice Martin in this little room. They only get bunk beds, so they don't have a double bed because I just didn't have enough room, but they only have one child. So this should be enough space 
to also put infant cribs and toddler beds. Also, this is Nissa's room. So Nissa is over here at the end of the hall. And then I made the bathroom a entrance from the main hall. So everyone can now use this bathroom upstairs. And then we also have the bathroom downstairs, but it only has a shower. So we will not be able to bathe the children in the shower. And don't forget Kitty. Yes, Kitty is still here too. So Ava is also going to adopt Gregory. And the reason for that is I don't think that Nyssa will be around long enough for Gregory to completely grow up. Maybe she will. I don't know. Because I'm not sure if elders have enough time for children to become teenagers. They might. Uh, but definitely not for him to become an adult. So Ava is going to be adopting Gregory. And it looks like the babies don't age up until Saturday. And that's because I have it on long lifespan. We might be changing that. In fact, what I might do is set this to short lifespan. And the reason why I might do that is because... Alice Martin only has one child, and her child is Claire. What we might do is use Claire for the other challenges that I have for this month, and we'll say that Claire wants to go back to Alice Martin's original world, which is Strangerville, and become a zombie, and then through some scientific accident, she gets replicated into clones of herself, which will be a baby, an infant, a toddler, a child, a teenager, a young adult, an adult, and an elder. And that will help me complete the rest of this challenge because she could also be a zombie at every stage that she's able to be a zombie at. So I might do that and then build her house in Strangerville which is the zombie house. And then that will get all of the requirements done for the first stage of April's challenges. So we'll also have to get someone struck by lightning and someone will must shower in the rain. Those are both seasons requirements. So for right now, I think the first thing that we are going to do is to resurrect Nyssa. So all she has to do is eat this ambrosia and hopefully not sit down. I don't like it when she sits down because sometimes that bugs things and the ghost... No, don't be mean to Eddie. Don't even talk to Eddie. Eddie is going to feed his kids. Oh, come on. Maybe I'll have to turn autonomy off. Come on, Nissa. Just finish your ambrosia and then you can do whatever you want. Oh. Uh, She's going to go wash the dish before she resurrects herself. No. Nissa! The washing the dish made her not resurrect. Oh, come on. Fine. We have to cheat it. And she just zaps back to life. I don't like doing it that way because it's not as dramatic. The other way is much better, but fine. Whatever, Nissa. All right, Eddie, we got to come out here and build this rocket ship. We need to bring back five unique living alien critters from voyaging into space. I don't know why, but whenever a Sim is tired, they will put the Murphy bed down, regardless of what their other action is. So Lila put the Murphy bed down and then came over here to get coffee. I think I'm going to just get rid of it. The Murphy bed, that is. Oh no, Eddie needs to go to work. Come on, take a day off. You can't go to work. Well, as it is with new parents, we're not getting much sleep. Who are you, Malik Holcomb? What are you doing in this house? I don't know why you're here. We don't even know you. Okay, well, thanks for cleaning up. Oh, and Sarah Scott, um, like people come into your house in the early morning or the middle of the night. For no reason. Sarah is just helping herself to a bunch of drinks at my bar at 6 a.m. Well, now it's 8 a.m. still. 
Um, double fisting, Sarah. Okay. Um, you better get a quick meal. You do not have time to make something. Now, one issue I'm having is that Eddie is trying to build this rocket and he's having burnout. That's annoying. Well, I suppose it's time to age all the babies up. It is their birthday. Claire is going to be sunny. Susanna is going to be sensitive. Norman is going to be sunny. Elijah is going to be sunny as well. Liana is going to be cautious. Roger is going to be sunny. Lots of sunny infants. And Layla is going to be cautious. All right, this is now the seven infant challenge. Um, <laughs> hopefully everyone can manage. Well, unfortunately, I don't have room for cribs for all of them. But we have one crib and then six playmats because the playmats only take up one space. And their bassinets, while they did take up two spaces, one space was just in front for the person to stand. So, yeah, we can't do that with cribs. And I don't know what we're going to do for toddler beds. I don't think the toddler beds will fit either. Uh, that's a problem for later. That's a problem for Sunday because apparently all of their birthdays are on Sunday and it is now Friday. So that's only three days. Meanwhile, Eddie is now working on his rocket and it is getting there. I have to keep an eye on Eddie and make sure that he doesn't start to burn out because he's constantly working on this rocket. Oh, it's raining outside. Okay, someone needs to shower in the rain and someone needs to get struck by lightning. Well, Eddie's going to shower in the rain. All right, it looks like our rocket is finished. We did not get any lightning. Oh, we need to call our work and take a vacation day again. Maybe we can call in fake sick to work and get some more days off. All right, we'll explore space. And we need to get five unique living alien critters from voyages into space. Derelict vessel. Eddie sees a large ship floating silently ahead. It looks abandoned or at least very poorly maintained. Should Eddie try to board it to see what's inside or just use the robotic arm to collect some spare parts from the outside? Let's board the ship. Oh, science. After crossing over via the other ship's airlock, Eddie looks around and realizes that this must have been a science vessel. Machines, sparkly rocks, plants, microscopes. Yep, definitely sciencey stuff. Where should he explore next? Let's go to the biology lab because I really want to find some extraterrestrial critters. In the biology lab, Eddie comes across a purple specimen that seems to be breathing or maybe quivering. It's hard to tell, but it's moving at least. Suddenly, he feels the whole ship shudder and rumble. Keep looking or leave now. Um, maybe he should leave quickly and take it with him, hopefully. I, I think he's taking it with him. Okay, he found an alien. Eddie doesn't know what happens to people who stick around in situations like this because those people are all dead. He'd really prefer not to be one of them. So he hops into his rocket and blasts off before this turns into a bad horror movie. Okay, we got one out of five of the aliens. Are we going to get one every single time we come back from space? No, Eddie, you're not done. Go back up there. Strange turn of events. Error, error. After a perilous journey to the deepest, darkest edges of space and time, Eddie has ricocheted off the edge of time itself and is now retracing his sojourn in reverse. The rocket is backing into a debris field. What happened here? Navigated a wreck or space battle? I maybe navigated a wreck? Wreckage. Reversing back through the flotsam, the rocket drifts like a time salmon against the relentless river of causality until it is surrounded by wreckage. What happened here? Salvage mission or scan for life? Let's try scan for life. Got data. The results show that this ship once belonged to the Boreans, creatures of pure boron. This is useful scientific data, as very little is known of creatures of the fifth element. 
Scans continue now that the results have been seen and the rocket backs out of the wreck. What happened just before? Exited hyperdrive? Zoom! That safest way to travel. As the drives activate, a flash of light flips the time polarity. Eddie is going the right way again and needs to keep the time stream intact. What should he do? Engage hyperdrive. Back to the wreck. Correct. That's what happened. Eddie zooms through the cosmos, arriving at a debris field. What should he do? Scan for life. Okay, now Eddie is going to be active instead of lazy. Good. Got data again. Right, that's what happened. Eddie scans the wreck, gaining invaluable scientific knowledge, avoiding the time edge. He safely makes his way home. Okay. Did he get anything? Some space debris. Well, it's pouring down rain. We need someone to get struck by lightning, but who should we have get struck by lightning? Turbulence ahead. Eddie carefully guides the rocket into orbit over a small alien world, but it's clear right away that something is wrong. Ionic interference in the planet's thermosphere is causing havoc with the ship's primary systems. Eddie decides to attempt an emergency landing, which is smart because he has no other choice. Repairs needed. Well, this is going not great. Eddie's ship crashes spectacularly into the surface of the planet. According to the damage diagnostic, the ship won't be safe to fly until Eddie can replace the catalyzer on the port compression coil. It's nothing until you don't have one. Eddie steps out of his ship and begins the search. Alien Landscape to the east, a jagged series of rocks stabs toward the alien sky. It looks like a cross between a mountain range and a pile of shrapnel. Eddie can see a lone curl of smoke rising from one of the peaks. To his west, the valley looks much easier to traverse, but there's no obvious signs of life. Let's brave the mountains because I want life. A change of plans? Eddie does his best to scale the impossible terrain, but it proves too difficult. He resolves to get more exercise when, if he gets back home. The Western Valley is the only way left to go now, but the light is starting to fade. Okay, he has no athletic skill, I know. There's just enough light left for Eddie to make out a large camp, but whoever was staying here appears to have left for safer shelter. Turning towards the sound of a deep growl, he spies a pack of monstrous beasts sniffing the ground not far away. This planet isn't safe. Eddie decides to attempt the flight home without the replacement part. Oh no, he made a crash landing. And the rocket has to be rebuilt. Oh, that is so sad. Maybe I should do some upgrades before we... Yeah. Crash landing. Oh, that wasn't so bad. It just cost me a thousand smolians. I thought he had to rebuild the whole thing from scratch. Small craft spotted. Eddie is just biting into his astronaut ice cream sandwich when he spots a small craft that seems to be hailing his ship. Is someone in trouble? Eddie blasts for a closer look. Space duel. As Eddie draws closer, he realizes that it's an alien spacecraft piloted by a three-eyed, 16-tentacled alien who is gritting too much to be in real distress. Claiming to be the best starfighter in the universe, the alien challenges him to a duel and offers a substantial reward. Does Eddie accept? Well, we'll accept, but he's not going to win. I haven't upgraded the rocket. Duel. No two space duels begin the same way, but this alien seems to have a plan. With a wave of his tentacles, he zips off to the horizon, then turns his starfighter to face Eddie's. Eddie does the same, pauses, and then veers back to charge the alien ship. The duel is on. Attack! Not going so well. Eddie uses his surprise advantage to land the first hit, but it goes downhill from there. Note to self, never duel an alien with 14 more hands than you. The extra-handed terrestrial unleashes a wall of missile fire, and judging by the smoke and warning lights, Eddie's ship has been hit. Should he retreat or fight to regain his edge? We're going to fight. We're going to crash the ship again, but so what? Okay, my lamp over here got struck by lightning. It's a draw. Eddie recalls a nifty trick. Pursing his lips, he lets out a shrill alien mating cry. 
egomaniac pilot turns two eyes on the horizon and one on his mirror, losing sight of Eddie just long enough. Eddie lands another hit, tying the score as the clock runs out. Impressed, the alien says they should fight again soon. Eddie ha heads proudly home. Did I get anything? Oh, a dead blue slug. Yes. That's two out of five. Oh, and I crash landed. That was unexpected. I think I may need to upgrade this so that I don't crash land so much. Okay, this is the same sort of thing. The going through the strange turn of events. Maybe we'll take the other option this time, the space battle. The debris reassembles into a fierce pirate ship while laser blasts spawn and retract into their respective blasters. An epic battle un ensues and the ships drift further apart. Communications become active. What did Eddie say to the pirate captain? Plead for peace? I'm kind of thinking we might need a nanny. Diplomatic disaster. As the conversation plays back in reverse, though it sounds like gibberish, Eddie can detect where it might have all gone wrong. What happened just before this? Exited hyperdrive or warped subspace? We'll say warped subspace. Okay, here we go. We're going back the same way. Okay, if we try threaten with war... Maybe the plea for peace was what caused us to get into that situation. Chronological contradiction. That's not what happened. I know it's not. A chrono shock. Chrono rocks is the spaceship sending it home in tatters. Okay, fine. That doesn't look like it's in tatters to me. All right, we'll try doing an upgrade. And then maybe Eddie will get struck by lightning while he's upgrading. I need people to be outside. And everyone keeps going back inside. Okay, what got struck? Ugh, just that? Come on. Please strike somebody. Oh, you're too tired. Getting struck by lightning is actually a hard thing to do. Okay, that's it. Everyone's taking a day off work tomorrow. There's another thing struck by lightning. Um, but nobody was over there. All right, I don't know how long this thunderstorm is going to last. For some reason, these two seem content to stay out here. Can you not get inside? Kenny, what are you doing? Help everybody. All right, nobody got struck by lightning, unfortunately. <laughs> but our bluebell plant did make it to maturity. All right, I'm just going to send everyone to sleep. Okay, I have made a small renovation again and we have some windows on the side because i forgot that i was going to do this originally was create a little bump out here so that this bedroom here gets a window lila's bedroom before did not have a window and that was not intentional so i also gave an extra three tiles to ava's room and this allows them to not only get an extra window, but to be able to fit two cribs in here. And then we have two play mats. And then the bathroom is a little bit bigger with a separate space for the toilet. And I have tested that the Sims will come in here and use the toilet when someone is in the bathtub. And it's sort of private. Additionally, we have hired a nanny, Alfonso. And I also hired a butler. So I made a small basement for the butler with a duplicate bathroom because we need more bathtubs. All of these kids need to be washed. And this is where the butler is going to sleep. And the entrance is just out here next to the rocket ship. So it's a little bit out of the way, but I think it'll work. Message for Eddie. Bzzz, Eddie, come in. Bzzz. Commander Vanderwater needs his help. There is a satellite out in orbit that is malfunctioning. Millions of Sims are complaining about their poor cell phone data coverage. 
They want to post pics of their food, their kittens, and their profound fortune cookies, but can't. The commander needs Eddie to take a look. Okay. Lots of goopy goop. Eddie arrives at the satellite and notices it's covered in a light pink goop. But why? What is it? Try to clean or shoot at it. I guess we'll try to clean it because if it's an alien, I don't want to shoot it. Surprisingly delicious. Eddie suits up, opens the doors, and floats towards the satellite. As he gets closer, Eddie notices that there are sprinkles in the goop. What? Eddie pulls out his space chamois and wipes some off. He sniffs it and then takes a taste. In outer space? That doesn't even make sense. It's frosting. Eddie takes a sample for his lab analysis and for a snack, then returns to the ship. Um, well, it's probably a space alien. A big bunny. All of a sudden, Eddie sees a big shadow. He quickly looks to see a giant pastry freezer bunny floating by. It looks like it has its eyes focused on another satellite and it starts to shoot pink frosting. Blast it or flee? I guess we'll try blasting it. Yikes, without the super ion cannons, the blasts bounce right off the bunny. The angry bunny turns towards Eddie's ship, but luckily he gets away. And he found some space debris. That's not helpful. Oh, if we install a wormhole generator, we can go to Sixum, but I, it says bring back five unique living alien critters from voyages into space. I don't know if it will count if we go to Sixum and get it. I guess we'll install the ion cannon defense system because it, we really needed that on the previous voyage. Oh, it's the infant's birthdays. Yay, we get to have a lot of toddlers. Hi, Claire. Happy birthday, Claire. Next, it's Roger's birthday. I forgot the next ones that were supposed to be aged up are Eddie's kids. Well, happy birthday, Suzanne. Oh, Suzanne is a happy infant. Okay. She's also going to be independent as well. And then Norman. Happy birthday, Norman. Norman's also a happy infant. Happy birthday, Liana. Happy birthday, Layla. What? Layla is a top-notch infant. Okay. And then Elijah. Elijah's also a top-notch infant. So we got two top-notch, two without a trait, and, and I think the rest of them had happy infant. Oh, Claire also had top-notch infant. I haven't seen any of them go downstairs yet. I don't think they can go downstairs until they get level two of movement. Oh, well... Looks like we have our first person to come downstairs, and it is Elijah. You only have movement level one. Sometimes they can go down the stairs, and sometimes they can't. Well, if you guys can make it downstairs, there's everything you need down here. Oh, no. Whoops. I completely forgot about this thing starting fires well the thing is it had a load of clothes in it and you can't clean the lint tray when there's a load of clothes in it no don't go save the kids from the fire there's no more fire I guess they're all going to be downstairs though <laughs> um whoops why do the fires always start again the cat got on... I thought... No! The cat got caught on fire. I thought pets couldn't catch on fire. But no, it says the pet is singed from previously having been on fire. Okay, interesting. You like rocket science, Eddie. Why isn't this fun? I guess this is considered handiness. Pookapoo, where are you? Eddie stares down at a formidable tower on a red planet. The cosmic relief dog pound isn't just a fable, it's real. Eddie is searching for Miss 
Fuzan's prized Pukapu, a rare breed of dog that could bring big bucks on the black market. It will bring big bucks to Eddie, too, if he brings it home unscathed. Welcome to the pound. Eddie parks his rocket ship and goes into the pound. The alien at the front desk raises an eye as he walks in. Jobs filled, she said. Eddie can explain about the missing dog or make an excuse to look around. Maybe we'll try disclosing the mission. That's probably not a good idea, though. Uh, we'll go with make an excuse. Pretty sure you get tranquilized if you admit why you're there, it, because the pound is in on the abduction. Access denied. Well, that didn't work. Eddie thought his story about losing his mutt was rather convincing. He even mustered a tear. But the alien isn't letting him pass the desk. She can search the computer for recent records or take down his info. Eddie agrees to the search to buy time. The Red Leash. Eddie waits for the alien to search her computer for a record of fits. The Pookaboo. Apparently nothing comes up. The alien hands back the photo and claims to have dogs to feed, but she doesn't get up. Eddie notices a small red leash, much like in Fitz's photo, sticking out of a box under the desk. What now? Confront her and or investigate cages. Let's try the cages. To inject or not to inject. Eddie is escorted down a long hallway by a grumpy-looking guard. He shoves Eddie into an examination room and explains that he'll need a rabies shot if he wants to get near the animals. Does Eddie agree to the injection? Oh, this is the one, I think, where they inject you and they knock you out. Um, I'm going to say no. The guard seizes Eddie and injects him anyway. When Eddie wakes up, he is on the asphalt next to his rocket ship. The cosmic relief dog pound is locked, and the only response to his knocks is a lot of barking. Looks like it's time to pack his mission in. Okay, well, that did not go as planned. Asteroid approaching. An asteroid is rocketing towards the planet. What is Eddie going to do? Try to blast it. Okay, we do have the blasters this time. Success. The asteroid shatters into fragments which burn up harmlessly into the atmosphere. Eddie is able to grab some fragments that blasted loose. We got a space rock. That's not what I want. Space pirates. Eddie sees some unsavory characters approaching fast in his rear view mirror. Uh-oh, those are space pirates, and Eddie's about to be shipjacked. They demand a suitcase full of simoleons to let Eddie pass or else. And let's attack. We have the ion cannons. Probably a bad idea, but... Eddie is fierce. Whoa, that escalated quickly, but Eddie's quick offensive strike took the pirates by surprise, and they crumble into a teary, blubbering puddle. They even offer Eddie some spare wires and loose change to entice him to leave them alone. Sure, we'll take the offer. Although it's probably not what I want. Nobody messes with Eddie. Those pathetic pirates practically trip over each other in order to get out of Eddie's way. But before they go, they wash Eddie's windshield and give him a quick oil change just to stay on his good side. Return home, really? Oh, we got a dead red coral. Oh, we got two things. Wow, we only need one more. Okay, go back, Eddie. Reach for the moon. Eddie has his sights set on the moon. Should he orbit and observe or try to land? Let's land. Even though we don't have landing stabilizers. Lunar landing. Touchdown. The beagle has landed. Eddie is now safely on the moon. Should he send out the scientific looking probe or get out there and explore the surface himself? Let's send the probe. Let the robot take the risk. The probe is transversing the lunar landscape with agility and style. From his tiny porthole, Eddie can see the droid having more fun than he's had in years. Luckily, it should at least bring back a souvenir. A space rock. Message for Eddie. Okay, this is another one of these. We'll go check it out. Okay, I forgot how I answered this last time. I think I tried to clean it. Let's shoot at it this time. Ready, aim, fire. Eddie takes aim with the standard cannons and standard cannons and attempts to shoot off the goop. It seemed to work a little bit as some of the pink substance floats off into space, but that could have been a disaster. Um, maybe we'll shoot it again. 
Good shot. Thanks to Eddie's focus, his aim was impeccable and all the goop was shot off. Okay. A big bunny. All of a sudden, Eddie sees a big shadow. He quickly looks to see a giant pastry freezer bunny floating by. It looks like it has eyes focused on another satellite and starts to shoot pink frosting. We'll blast it. Ion cannons are so cool. Yes, those amazing ion cannons blast off the pastry bunny's arm. A new arm starts to regenerate, but the bunny seems to have learned its lesson and floats off into space. I think we did okay last time shooting at it too, so I don't know how the ion cannons helped. Eddie found some space debris. Eddie, come on, we need to find an alien. Abduction. Eddie doesn't remember much, but thinks he may have been abducted. He now stands in a small, sterile area. A motley assemblage of hideous beings sits furtively in the bleachers. Slowly, a pedestal rises from the floor. It contains two items, a ball and a container with two holes, one round and one triangular. The room is tense with excitement. The ball in the round hole. Ah, oh, this is a stupid test, isn't it? Applause! The round ball deftly slides into the round hole, and the room erupts into ferocious applause. Eddie instinctively bows graciously as the puzzle recedes back to the floor, replaced by a new one. This next rising pedestal has a hat! Yes, it's a very fine hat, perhaps a derby. What should Eddie do? Wear the hat. Well done! Eureka, the hat goes on the head. More cheers spew forth from the crowd as Eddie rifles the hat into the stands with a flourish to be caught by one lucky fan. The hatless pedestal sinks and disappears into the ground and is shortly replaced again. This latest test pedestal appears to hold a chair, a simple metal chair. Sit in the chair or sit next to the chair? Yeah, I'm not so sure about this one. Probably should sit in the chair, but I don't trust them. I'm going to sit next to it. Wise choice. Eddie is too smart for them. That chair is on one of those moving platforms. As the crowd applauds Eddie's wisdom and foresight, the chair sinks down into the dark recesses in the floor, replaced by the next challenge. This pedestal is made of solid gold and contains valuable looking jewels. Don't grab the jewels or grab the jewels. Hmm, let's grab the jewels. It's probably a mistake. Win! Woo! Free jewels! Eddie snatches the valuable rocks as the crowd gives a standing ovation to his prudent sense of value. The creature had passed the trials. May his species flourish and grow, he hears, before being materialized safely back in his sh ship, already returning home. Okay, what did we get for our prize? A space rock. Escape pod adrift. While cruising comfortably somewhere in the vicinity of the Vega Startron, Eddie sees a banged up escape pod drifting out of orbit. Lights are flickering. Maybe something's inside. If he brings it on board his ship, he can see what it is. Or he could just use it for spare parts. We're going to bring it on board because I think dismantling it will just get us a bunch of upgrade parts. Alien on board. Eddie uses his ship's robotic arms to drag the escape pod on board through the airlock. After a few minutes of banging on the hatch, it pops open and an alien creature pops out. Eddie's not sure whether he should try to catch it and subdue it or just shove it into space. Catch it, of course. Alien escaped. No! This creature is surprisingly slippery, even by slimy alien standards. Eddie just can't keep a hold of it, and it gets away and starts chewing through some electrical cables. Hmm. Hope Eddie wasn't going to need those cables for the journey home. Yikes! That was the one that I knew was going to get me an alien, and it didn't. Maybe Eddie needs to work on his fitness. Oh no, it's almost Nissa's time. So Nissa will be leaving us soon. Well, he safely returned home, and you're going back out, Eddie. No, go back out. Okay, another message for Eddie. Lots of goopy goop. Eddie arrives at the satellite and notices it's covered in a light pink goop. But why? What is it? Um, let's try to clean it this time. I think that's what makes him get out and collect some of the stuff. Okay, it's delicious. A big bunny. Okay, blast it. And ion cannons are so cool. Let's go home. All right. Did we get another thing? 
No, I thought we got something from that one before. Let's try expanding the fuel storage tank. I seem to be getting caught in the same scenarios and I'm not getting my last living alien critter. Okay, Ignacio Robles is so utterly smitten with Nissa Landry that he is proposing marriage. Of course, but Nissa doesn't have very much time left. Maybe she should get married as soon as possible. And he wants to live together. Well, you're engaged. So I love that, but we can't do it through this screen. Well, Ignacio has even less time left than Nissa. So it's a good thing that he decided to propose because I think within the next couple of days, Ignacio will be leaving us anyway. And then also Nissa will be passing on. Oh, Lila is going to be cheerful now instead of hot-headed? Sure, that makes things easier. Small craft spotted. Eddie is just biting into his astronaut ice cream sandwich when he spots a small craft that seems to be hailing his ship. Is someone in trouble? Eddie blasts in for a closer look. Space duel. As Eddie draws closer, he realizes that it's an alien spacecraft piloted by a three-eyed, 16-tentled, alien okay we've actually had this one so we're going to accept the duel this time we have ion blasters okay and we're going to attack okay and then we're going to fight all right that time it didn't turn out so well eddie recalls a nifty trick pursing his lips he lets out a shrill alien mating cry the economic pilot turns one eye on the horizon and one on his mirror but his third eye spot him coming. The alien dodges Eddie's fire as the clock runs out, telling him to focus on upgrades, not stunts. The alien leaves Eddie to skulk home. Well, I have upgraded my ship. Turbulence ahead. Eddie carefully guides the rocket into orbit over a small alien world, but it's clear right away that something is wrong. Ionic interference in the planet's thermosphere is causing havoc with the ship's primary systems. Eddie decides to attempt an emergency landing, which is smart since he has no other choice. Repair is needed. Well, this is going not great. Eddie's ship crashes spectacularly into the surface of the planet. According to the damage diagnostic, the ship won't be safe to fly until Eddie can replace the catalyzer on the port compression coil. It's a nothing part until you don't have one. Eddie steps out of his ship and begins the search. Okay, this time, instead of braving the mountains because we have no fitness skill, we will head west. The market. After a long walk, Eddie finally sees signs of life. He appears to have discovered a large camp filled with little creatures bustling about and trading small bits of junk they've scavenged from various crash sites. One little merchant near him has a part that would be suitable for a replacement for the catalyzer, but how to obtain it? Let's try to communicate. Don't steal it. We don't have mischief skill. Ooh, we don't have charisma either. <laughs> Eddie has been meaning to polish up on his social skills. The little creature takes great offense to Eddie's pleas. Suddenly, all of the creatures in the camp begin to hiss. They draw tiny but vicious looking blades. This planet isn't safe anymore. It's not ideal, but Eddie will have to attempt the flight home without a new catalyzer. Well, you have to have skills in everything to do this type of quest. I didn't realize that the rocket science skill was kind of like the temples in Salvadorada. But basically, if you don't have a lot of skills, then you are most likely going to have a hard time. All right, let's try again. <laughs> Moving day. Passing the planet Yang, Eddie sees a weary-looking alien standing amid a huge pile of trash bags and rusty futon parts. Turns out he's moving to a new pad on the planet Rompeter, and his friend who was supposed to help him just bailed. Eddie's got some extra time. Should he pitch in? Sure. We've also got extra cargo space, so hopefully that's helpful. A lot of junk. Good thing Eddie has an expanded cargo bay. It's a lot of stuff to move. Old concert tees, milk crate furniture, black light posters, but it all fits in pretty easily. And they blast off for Rompeter. The alien is so grateful he gives Eddie his least dirty futon mattress as thanks. Eddie incinerates it. Do we get anything else? I don't think we did. 
Well, it's thunderstorming, and everyone has what they need outside, and they're all locked out. Oh, that was a close one, but I don't think that anybody got hit. I'm never going to be able to pause it. I think I've been able to pause once, but I wasn't focused on it. I was focused on something else, and then I was like, ah, somebody's getting hit by lightning. Because it's just too quick. You cannot pause. Small craft spotted. Eddie is just biting into his... Yeah, we've had this one again. Okay, we're going to accept the space duel and hope that we can get lucky this time. I think it's the maneuvering thrusters that we need. Oh, it's a draw. So this is the one that I got before. I think I got something out of this before. Yeah, fossilized alien skull, but I don't think that is yeah that doesn't count it's a fossil well that sucks okay we might improve the maneuvering thrusters i don't think that we will have enough time to do that before we have to go to bed though no don't run inside no no running inside come on stop it and then he slips in the puddle you wouldn't have slipped in that puddle had you not tried to run inside. Well, now he's going to stop even earlier because he's going to get so dirty. Okay, everyone is outside. I have not seen any more lightning strikes. But everyone has everything they need to do. You all can be social. You all can eat because there's food right here. You can even sleep. I have little benches you can nap on. Okay, there's no more thunderstorm. Well, we can change that. Well, this handy little weather machine will help you get more thunderstorms because getting struck by lightning is super rare. So you're going to have to put all your sims outside for a while. And we're getting dazed. Great. Okay, can't do that. Well, Eddie was able to do it. Maybe. Okay, it's raining. Nothing on my lot is getting struck by lightning. I have all these people out here and no one is getting struck by lightning. Oh, it's Gregory's birthday. Well, <laughs> we might have to celebrate it out in the rain. Okay, Gregory, you're home from school. Now we should have a birthday party for you. And we really don't need to change up his room. I mean, we could get rid of the bear, but... I want to leave it down here for the toddlers, so we'll just leave his room the way it is. <gasps> there we go! I saw it! I at least saw it! She got struck by lightning! Okay, we can stop this madness. Now we don't need this annoying thunderstorm anymore, so we're going to make it cloudy skies like it was before. Hey Ignacio, it's me, Eva. Do you want to go out on a date? No! He's married now! Why is someone asking him on a date? Oh, he had a relationship with her? Well, how? Why? Um, I didn't know that. I thought he was single. He's married to her. How? Um, how did that happen? I think MC Command Center made a boo-boo. Because he can't be married to two people. I don't think I have polygamy on. I'm pretty sure I don't. Okay, he is married to two people. Interesting. All right, Gregory, we're not going to do a lot of to-do about your birthday. You're just going to blow out the candles. Happy birthday, Gregory. And you're going over here for some reason. Where are you going to age up? Outside, in the thunderstorm. Well, sure. Because you have to be as close to the counter as you can be. All right, he is outgoing. And I would pick family-oriented, but you can't do that for teenagers. I want to say that he takes after Nyssa, and he's going to be an art lover. And for Aspiration, he wants to be a super parent. 
because he was adopted and he was adopted by an elderly person who really wanted a child and so he also wants to be a parent all right now everyone can go to work and i can actually try it still i did not get the clear skies that i wanted well i want cloudy skies but i don't want thunderstorms i have to use each sim in turn to make sure that they don't get dazed twice because that'll kill them and of course ignacio failed as well well i aimed for cloudy skies and i got rain instead that's fine i don't care <laughs> i just don't want thunderstorms reach for the moon eddie has sights set on the moon should he orbit and observe or try to land um we're going to land okay touchdown the beagle has landed eddie is now safely on the moon should he send out the scientific looking probe or get out there and explore the surface for himself well he doesn't have any fitness skill but last time we sent the probe and i don't think we got anything let's try exploring on foot walking in the moon that's one small step for sim one slightly awkward lunging step for some kind eddie explores the lunar seas the lunar rocks and the other lunar rocks he takes some for the trip home well we got a rock space rocks they don't count oh no we're losing ignacio I was going to try and have him break up with his other wife, but, um, yeah, that didn't work out. Um, Nissa just walked out of the room. Uh, yeah, the reason why she did that is because I have witness death turned off. I usually turn that off in my game because it's very disruptive. And the only reason why Lila's in here is because she's watching the toddler through the wall. Okay. Well, Grim, you're going to have to come back later for Nyssa because Nyssa is actually only maybe a day or two away. That is if I don't get Eddie to get his last alien soon. Goodbye, Ignacio. Sorry we made you marry someone else. Okay, we're going to engrave Ignacio's urn and the default is rest in pieces there's a couple of defaults and this one is kind of mean but it's also kind of funny because it's the sims and of course Grim is just joining the dance party downstairs oh a space duel we'll accept but i don't think i finished that upgrade we'll try fighting anyway oh it's a draw eddie requ this is the one i got before and so we might get something we got a dead space porcupine. I don't think that counts because it's not living. Oh, we already had that one. Great. Okay, we'll continue improving the maneuvering thrusters because I think that will make a difference, at least on that one. Well, since it's fall, we'll plant our garden with some fall plants. Okay, this time I guess we're going to land on the moon. Oh, abort, abort. The rocket was programmed to land on soft cheese, but instead landed on hard rock. This was understandable miscalculation, but nonetheless, the ship is crippled. The landing back home might be a bit tricky. Okay, I guess we should improve the landing stabilizers. Oh, it is the toddler's birthdays. I did not think we would get to the point that we had all of them ready. Oh, and they're so tired. I'm going to have to redesign the house. A lush planet. Beep beep. Eddie's rocket ship has detected an unexpected ob object on the horizon. As he gets closer, he can't believe his eyes. Green billowy treetops. Crystal blue streams. Could it be the mystical lush planet? Eddie switches off his turbo boosters as he breaks through the planet's atmosphere. I'm not sure if I've had this one before. Where to land? Cruising slowly now, Eddie glides over miles and miles of thick jungle. At last, a clearing. But the clearing seems to be cluttered with alien ruins. Should he land there anyway, where there's less chance of crashing, or opt the dense, dark cover of the jungle? Let's go near the ruins. We don't have the landing computer yet. Ruins of an alien civilization. Phew, Eddie's rocket ship lands without a scratch, and so far no aliens are running out to greet him. Eddie wanders into a half-collapsed temple, which seems to have been constructive of a massive porous rock. More strange space rocks are scattered about. Oh, I don't want space rocks, though, along with a beautiful sacrificial bowl and other religious artifacts. Should he bring home artifacts for analysis? 
I'm going to take them because I want something, but I want aliens. Not so smooth exit. The instant Eddie picks up a talisman, the ground starts rumbling. It's a trap. Covering his head, he bolts from the temple just as the walls give way. He makes it to his ship and manages to get it airborne. But the ship has suffered critical damage. Although Eddie got his artifact, this is going to be a rough landing. Well, hopefully the artifact is an alien. A space rock. A large space rock. Ugh. These large space rocks are worthless. Well, that went splendidly. What, Butler? You're not allowed to get into Nissa's bed. You have a bed downstairs. Why aren't you in it? Why did the bed get not assigned to the butler? I gotta fix that. Oh, good, it's Harvest Fest. I thought Eddie would have to go to work today. Oh no, we're losing Nissa again. Well, Nessa, you've reached the end of your second life. So you did have a family, but you didn't finish all of your aspiration because Gregory didn't get an A yet. Oh, well. Hello, Grim. So this time we're not bringing Nessa back. We'll let Grim turn her into an urn again, and then we will release her spirit and maybe keep the urns somewhere downstairs and then we're going to turn her bedroom into the kids bedroom because i have no more room in this house all of these toddlers are going to age up into children and the children beds are at least three tiles big whereas the toddler beds are only two tiles there's no way i'm going to fit all those beds in here thank you for your sacrifice nissa well, I had rearranged the house and was baking a cake. And guess what? The toddlers started aging up. So I guess we're going to pick something for Claire. Maybe Claire will be a geek and have a whiz kid aspiration. Sorry, we forgot your birthday, Claire. I actually was baking a cake for you right as we speak. And there it is. Maybe we can get Susanna to blow out the candles and sort of get these kids back on the right age order. Oh, she's going to take forever to age up, isn't she? She's going to walk all the way outside. No, she's going to age up there. Okay, Susanna is going to be active and you can have the motor aspiration. Now we should try to age up Norman wherever he is. Oh, he's coming down the stairs. Great. And the maid is putting my cake away. Come on, maid. Quit that. I don't know why they see the need to put away all of the food. Oh, Liana aged up. I didn't get him aged up in time. Okay, Liana is going to be a genius and you can have the mental aspiration. And Layla is going to be cheerful and let's make her a slumber party animal. And Norman aged up without the candles because I couldn't get him to the cake. So he's going to be hot headed sure and maybe we'll make him a playtime captain and elijah is going to be a dog lover and mind and body and roger is going to be a loner and maybe a creative genius all right now we have their bedroom upstairs where nissa's bedroom used to be and i stacked it full of beds and dressers so it looks like they could possibly live here and the shoes can go up here on top of these dressers because the person on the top bunk could easily grab them now we redid lila's room so that she actually has a double bed in here so we have to reassign that bed and then we added some computers to this room because it makes sense since Ava and Jules really do need a computer to do their work for their job. And then Eddie and Liberty also need computers for their jobs. So they have computers in their room now. And we have a makeup center over here in Lila's room. And then we need to assign all the kids their beds. Well, Eddie has work in eight hours. I think we're going to have to go this time because there's no more options to call in sick or do anything like that. We don't have any more vacation days left and there's no holiday. So we will have to go in 
And maybe we'll work on our social while we're at work. Well, Eddie is starting to burn out again, so maybe we might have to get him some creative skills. Actually, fitness works, so that's better for him because Eddie actually needs that skill when he goes on his astronaut journeys. Well, we finally worked through his mental fog, so he's just hanging out with everybody, having something to eat, and then he's going to go right back to upgrading that rocket ship. I think if I install the wormhole generator, that we can go to Sixum and hopefully find some aliens just lying around. Here's a little tip, though. He was working on the rocket ship and only got burnt out once when he was low level and working on it non-stop. Now, if you want to get burnout pretty easily, especially with, say, a super sim, uh, you can't do it with skill gains because you have to be low level, I think, to get burnout and you have to be actively gaining skills. So I think the best way to get burnout for someone who gains skill very fast is to go to work because it seems like every time you go to work you get burnout immediately oh no it's bess bess is actually involved with jules rico but if you ask either one of them in game if they are single they will always say yes it's because they never set them as boyfriend and girlfriend even though they were living together So let's just say friendly, deep thoughts, um, ask to just be friends. Sorry, Bess, but Jules is taken now and I completely forgot when I had him hook up with Ava. All right, let's go through the wormhole. Through the wormhole, the ship hurtles through the wormhole and emerges near an alien planet. A series of odd noises comes from the on-ship radio and Eddie is suddenly teleported off his ship. Beam down! Alright, there's some things to collect over here. Maybe they're alien specimens and we can call this scenario complete. A crystal? I guess there's some gems and crystals here, which I knew. I was hoping there might be some aliens, but I don't think that there is really. This is just a nice place to collect things. Okay, it says Extra extraterrestrial reacher. Have you completed the scenario? Game time elapsed seven days. Outcome astrozoologist. Bring back five unique living alien critters from voyages into space. I must have collected something, but it doesn't show what I've collected yet because it just completed. And I have no idea why. Oh, it was a dead pink whale. So yes, you can get the random aliens from these items in Sixum. So if you're having trouble completing this one and you go to Sixum, maybe you will get one. All right, Eddie, we don't need to do this anymore. Let's go back home. Now, of course, it's dreary and raining. But that was the end of this episode. So Eddie has completed the extraterrestrial research scenario and he got some satisfaction points maybe? Yes. Okay, and then when he does this, everyone in the house gets satisfaction points. I mean, it's just ridiculous how much satisfaction points you get from these scenarios. So if you can do some of the ones that allow you to choose a household instead of making a new household. You can bring your own sims into the household and then you can kick out all the other sims that you don't want. The only exception is that there are certain sims that have to be in the household for the scenario to work. And usually it's the, in the requirements list on the scenario. What you can do is start it with those required sims and then later on you can add other sims to the household. And that's what I have done here because I just wanted to use these sims and play them for a little while because what we're doing now is Claire is going to be part of my Kaz challenge and my build challenge. So basically 
Claire is going to be made over for all of her different life stages, and that's going to be the next part of the challenge. But anyway, this is Charity. Thanks for watching. Thank you.